know, I know, I know. It's been a long time with no <laughs> updates. That was not my intention at all. I have definitely been filming different things over the summer. I just haven't had a whole lot of time or a whole lot of energy to sit down and really edit everything. And then it just feels like I have all these videos and it just feels like a weight and then I don't want to deal with it <laughs> at all. But taking a little hiatus was not my intention. Literally every week I was like, okay, I'm gonna get some editing done. And then I never found a way to like work it in between planning for our anniversary vacation, which we just returned back from, and planning for Lux or preparing for Lux to go to pre-K two. He has started school, y'all, and it's just a lot. So yeah i have a whole lot of life updates some things have changed ttc updates all the things i'm gonna catch you guys all up and then we'll move forward from here um so if you're new here welcome my name is tanya um i have been documenting my fertility journey for baby number two up until this point my journey to baby number one is already documented on my channel if you're new if you are a returning subscriber welcome back i've missed you guys i've thought a lot about you guys i've tried to keep my little stories on youtube updated and post like those little shorts and stuff just to kind of like pop in here and there throughout summer but it's just been a lot going on so let's get into these updates if you need a drink because it might be a minute to get one pumpkin spice lattes came back today and my favorite well what became my favorite last year is the ice apple crisp macchiato that's what i'm drinking today um i know this year they changed the recipe a little bit and they use oat milk i tried it with the regular way that they had it last year and it's it's fine i haven't tried it with the oat milk yet um but anyways let's get into the updates so before i go too far into it excuse me if you can hear my son's sound machine going in the background i am recording now because he is sleeping so that has also been a part of the problem like the kid won't let me get things done um so where do i start i think i last left off with my clomid cycle failing back in may and then i put in a request through like the little patient portal to see my OB because I was disappointed with the way that my clomid cycle kind of went with her. Um, not because it failed because we all know sometimes they're successful and sometimes they're not. My issue was mostly like the lack of her ability to monitor me through that cycle. I would have liked like a scan just to make sure my body was responding, check follicle sizes and stuff like that. Um, just to see what my body was doing throughout the cycle especially since it had been a few years since I had been on clomid I just would have liked a little bit more attention and when I requested um, when I went to the follow-up appointment in June to talk to her about like how I would like things to go um, I didn't leave that appointment and I have that footage maybe I'll insert a clip but I didn't leave that appointment feeling super confident and um her ability to care for me like i wanted to i felt like she started out strong with like getting all the labs done and you know getting me started on metformin and all the things but i feel like she just slacked off and then it was i wasn't talking to her as much it was always through her nurse that i'm having to talk to and i'm like is the nurse the person that's supposed to be providing my care or she's supposed to support you it felt like the nurse was doing everything or i was she was answering all my questions and like i was having to talk to the nurse and then when i was writing through the patient portal the nurse was writing me back and i'm like i want to hear responses from my provider not the nurse no offense to nurses i have nothing against the nurse i know a lot of nurses know a whole whole lot especially if they've been working in their fields for a long time i once uh wanted to be a nurse and was going down that path earlier on yeah i was in like a nursing program in high school and so i have nothing against nurses i said all that to say but when it comes to my fertility i just want to talk to a doctor right i want to talk to my ob the one that i sat down with and gave her my history i didn't give the nurse none of my history so the nurse of course is kind of generalizing care 
but when I came to my OB, when my first appointment, I sat down with her and I gave her my entire background. So I want to get the advice from the person that knows my case a little in a little bit more detail if that makes sense i just i was asking about like scans and stuff and they mostly want to do scans for like women who are already pregnant and stuff and i was just like this is going to be more more than i wanted it to be working with her and then she they said oh the nurse told me that they gonna they're gonna do six rounds of clomid before they try to do something a little bit more aggressive and i'm like wait a minute now i've already told you the history i've had with trying to conceive my first son and the medications that i've taken and i told you that i have a progesterone deficiency and all these things they're not even like giving me progesterone suppositories or nothing she only wanted to check my progesterone on cycle day 21 and that was the only type of monitoring she was doing um, because if my progesterone was elevated more than it was before I started treatment, then she knows that I ovulated. And I'm just kind of like, mm, no, this isn't good enough for me. Especially with if you've been here, you know, back in like April, I had that, um, what is the test to check to make sure my tubes are open? And then the one doctor told me that they were closed. And then when I went to my appointment for my doctor to give me like the final results she was like they spasmed or whatever so there's not there hasn't been anything else kind of looking more into that or whatever just to check on it it was just I just started getting really disappointed disappointed in her and I didn't feel confident in her and because I haven't felt confident in her I didn't want to move forward you know doing just useless rounds of Clomid or Femera or anything like that if my doctor isn't even going to look to make sure that I'm responding to the medication. I don't want to be trying and wasting six long months on something that is pointless because my body isn't responding to it but you wouldn't know that because you're not taking the time to look to make sure. I don't know. It was just yeah I just didn't feel confident. So I have not been taking clomid or doing anything and we've pretty much just kind of been trying to catch ovulation on our own just to see what would happen i did write them back in the patient portal and requested a referral to the local fertility clinic since that seems like it's going to be the only way that i can get a little bit more care than i wanted to or whatever um like a, a little bit more care than they're able to provide my insurance tricare has approved for me to go to the fertility clinic here i just am waiting before we went on our vacation last week we spent uh seven nights eight days in mexico and we i called before we left to talk to the referrals person at the fertility clinic just to make sure that they had my referral approval on file or whatever so that I can make an appointment and it's a little bit disappointing but I'm not gonna hold it to them because I was out of the country so they could have been calling and the call might not have been coming through so um, I'm gonna be following up with them because I haven't heard anything from them and I called a few days before i went on vacation so i don't know that that just kind of is like oh lord here we go some more mess so i'm gonna be following up with them to pretty much just make sure my referral was received on their end because i do have the approval and all that stuff printed out and i have it on hand for myself just in case but yeah and from there, I guess I'll be making an appointment with them and then... now we're going to kind of segue into like my stuff but then into my husband's part in this so i'm going to start the process with the fertility clinic like doing the tests and stuff that they want to run like let's run my labs all over again see where we are now because i haven't had things tested since february of this year so let's just see it they keep telling me like oh it might take about three months 
that's what the OB office said. It might take about three months before I can get into the fertility clinic. Um, so I wanted to at least get the ball rolling with getting my labs checked or whatever and seeing what my options are with the fertility clinic and letting them like check my husband's stuff too. But we just right before the week before we left for our vacation to Mexico, we got some news about my husband that I haven't really talked with him about like going into full detail about but what I will say is um, if you've been here for a while I've mentioned before about his heart surgery and things that he had going on with his heart before so we found out that he has some heart issues that can be fatal for him which is super scary and I want to like uh, that is our main focus right now I said all that to say like getting him healthy or whatever is our main priority for him when we were on our anniversary dinner last week in Mexico he was like you know we need to go to fertility clinic and he's ready to like continue with all the fertility stuff full force and all that stuff but at the same time I want my husband to be healthy and here with me um, because hearing from a cardiologist that what he has going on can be fatal and we're glad we caught it and all this stuff and he has all these scans and stuff that are coming up I'm getting a lump in my throat it's really really scary and my husband is really like nonchalant about it I'm about to start crying my husband is like really nonchalant and I don't know if he's trying to keep cool for me but at the same time like he is like my partner in life and my partner in all of this and over like another kid or anything I want to make sure he's good so yeah that's the main focus right now is making sure he's healthy um for years I've been telling him that you know he sounds like he stopped sleeping and uh stops breathing at night I've been telling him this to get checked for sleep apnea for the longest and he did request when we were stationed in Virginia with his ship doctor like hey you know my wife mentioned this can I you know go and see about getting a sleep study done they said that person which is not an actual doctor i might add was like oh no you're not showing like regular symptoms or whatever so he did not put the referral he denied his request for a referral to get a sleep study done that was about two years ago maybe three maybe two or three years ago he he made that request and so now that we're on shore duty my husband finally went back in july i haven't mentioned this on instagram or anything i mentioned that he had a cpap machine but he went and got sleep study done back in july this is also contributing to his heart issues and stuff right now and we found out that he stops breathing 107 times per hour on average and that blew my mind I thought it was like oh he stops breathing like three times a night or something like that because I if I'm up late I'm a night owl I'll hear him like stop I can hear him just kind of like like take a breath and then there's nothing else after it or whatever and then I usually have to like shake him and it wakes him up out of his sleep and he's like super tired during the day and stuff and so we found out that yeah he is <laughs> he stops breathing 107 times per hour at night so that freaked me out so we found that out in July uh, uh, towards the beginning of July and it was just kind of like whoa so he just got his CPAP machine like from like we found out in July and after all the paperwork and going back and getting this done and that done all like a month later he finally got his CPAP machine and he said that it's much better he feels better waking up and stuff now so that it's also been happening and I don't know on top of that we've been preparing for Lux to go to pre-k to like he's in pre-kindergarten um, we found a really good private school here in our area and so far it's so good it's really a nice community so far they have been very welcoming and supportive and helpful and helping us like adapt to their school and stuff and i like that it's like a it's real family oriented it feels like and um 
I, I appreciate that. That has been a big, big thing for me. <laughs> like my baby is no longer with at home with me during the day. He actually, he missed all of last week, which is, would have been his first full week of school. And he goes back tomorrow. But yeah, that is a big thing happening in our family. And now I'm like, my kid is going to school and I have all this free time. I could at least go and work part time doing something the only my only fear is like starting something and then having to turn around and tell them like okay my kid is going to be out for a week in october a week in november and then christmas break in december so it's just kind of like all they have a lot of days out of school i don't remember being out of school so much when i was a kid but this i mean he's out of school all the time it feels like so we'll see we'll see i'm still going to apply and try and see what happens and then i'll have more free time of course on my channel and i'm working on getting a blog started a website started um just to kind of document things that way i've tried to have blogs in the past i've tried but now I feel like I know a little bit more about how to like get the website started and I feel a little bit more confident and stuff. So I'll definitely be keeping you guys posted on that. What else is going on? I don't know. We went to Mexico, I mentioned, and it was the best relaxing vacation. Everybody enjoyed themselves. Lux loved the pool. I did get some footage, so I'll have that vlog and stuff coming up of like the little clips that I did get like hotel um our resort room tour and all that stuff like I'll share all that but yeah that's pretty much what's been going on like I haven't felt confident in my OB provider um we pretty much just been trying month to month on our own just to kind of see what would happen I haven't been doing anything special or anything like that it hasn't uh, to be honest it hasn't had my full undivided attention because of everything else that that's been going on like in july we were finding out about dion with his sleep apnea and that and then also like just kind of making sure i was buying things to get lux prepared lux also went to like summer camp at his new school for a week and um i did get some of that vlog footage <laughs> too i just I, I, I told, I'm telling y'all I have been vlogging and recording and stuff I just haven't had the time to edit so now that Lux is in school and while I'm in this transition figuring out what I'm going to do now with all this free time I'll be editing that stuff and kind of putting it out just to kind of get you guys caught up my camera cut off I'm not exactly sure where it cut off but yeah we've we've just had a lot going on I've been vlogging a lot and I'll be putting that content out just to kind of get you guys caught up so you have like that visual of what's been happening kind of maybe I'll do like one big long video just kind of like catching you guys up of all the things or whatever and maybe I'll just kind of condense some some things where I can just because I want to I still want to share what we've been doing for myself to to look back on that's mostly what this channel is I love going back and looking at old vlogs and being able to see how our life has changed and progressed and stuff over the years so I'm excited for um, you know having some free time to be able to do something that I want to do I don't know exactly what it is just yet but it's just kind of like I can do things now and I'm excited about it I get to kind of be me and only think about me during the day and I can do something that I want to do and it's just like endless possibilities and stuff like I want to get my blog going I want to have my set content days for youtube or whatever i'm constantly sharing on instagram stories that's where real daily life is happening if you want to know what's going on either facebook my facebook page which is linked my instagram stories are linked to that so that actually is the same things and then i try to remember to share it also on my uh, youtube stories too mm. as far as my dog diesel he is right here in front of me he is just 
skinny he picks and chooses when he wants to eat i will be taking him in here shortly both of my dogs actually i'll be taking them in um just for checkups because i think it's time for their pro heart injections around this time too um but diesel is just sleeping in front of me he's been pretty good still wants to cuddle and all that stuff overall everybody is just chill we're just going through a lot of adjustments and and stuff like that and i'm trying not to feel like overwhelmed with it all i'm trying to just take everything like one day at a time one thing at a time so that i'm not getting overwhelmed and feeling like i'm about to break down you know but yeah the stuff with my husband is really at the front of my mind right now because it's just so it's just so much especially when they start talking about you know if this doesn't happen and that and all these things don't work out then he has to be like medically retired and all that stuff and that changes like all the plans that we had for our lives it just it just kind of like really put things into perspective for me and really just changed up everything for me mentally I don't know we're gonna get through this he's gonna be fine he has a praying wife my son has a praying mama and I'm constantly praying and keeping faith that everything is gonna work out everything is gonna be fine I'm just asking God to just order order my steps in the way that we all should be going right now order everything according to his plan I pray that we have clarity enough to be able to recognize what is God's way for us so yeah that's what's going on for us we got things going <laughs> we have things going on um so yes we are still working on baby number two I actually had a dream last night that we actually adopted three kids a little boy and two little girls they were twins and both of their names were Joy J-O-Y and J-O-I and I remember so clear seeing their names like written down on paper and i thought that that was so interesting i have no idea what the little boy's name was but they were all asian ch children which was funny to me like wow is that just kind of like a preview of what's to come because i also have saved on my instagram a dream i had in my first trimester of pregnancy with luck um where i could see his face so clear he was born prematurely um Dion was all over him he had a head full of hair he had big eyes and I could just see his face so clear and the dream just felt so real and I was panicking because he came early in March and I was due at the beginning of May and if y'all know Lux was born in March <laughs> He was, I was panicking because, I mean, he came early and Dion almost missed his birth and he was all over him once we got to get him home and stuff. And it was like, wow, <laughs> like talk about a vision, a dream coming to life. But I have, I was talking, I said this on Instagram because that day when I woke up, I got on Instagram just talking about just how real the dream was and how I had a baby boy and I didn't know he was a boy and stuff at the time because again this was my first trimester and all these things and I saved that highlight on my Instagram saved it in a highlight on my Instagram just because it just blew my mind it blew my mind how I had that dream of what was to come and it all happened <laughs> that way it was just insane to me so last night that dream felt so very real and just clear and i was just like wow three more kids three more kids like i wonder if there is any truth or meaning to that i don't know we'll see we'll see but i've let you guys know so if it comes to fruition that way <laughs> it'll be here but i thought it was interesting that the twin girls were joy j-o-y and joy j-o-i and that that was was their names and they were they were little they weren't infants but they were like little toddler girls and then a little boy who was about five or six and 
we adopted them all. So, and we've talked about adoption even still, and Dion is still open to adoption, even though we are trying for number two. So, we never know. We never know. So, pray for us. I'll continue to pray for you guys. Leave in the comments any updates, anything we left off on. Did anybody get any new BFPs in the time that I've been away? Give me all the updates. Let me in on all the news. Like, I want to celebrate you guys. Like, you guys are always celebrating and championing me and my journey and encouraging me. I'd like to do the same for you. And as always, stay encouraged. Our babies are coming. Our babies are coming. Our babies are coming. We're going to take it one day at a time, one cycle at a time, one month at a time. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.